Okay, hi everyone. Sorry for the delay. We're just getting He'll be coming on the line in a second. Hope everyone's had a great day and a nice evening so far. Aha! <laughs> Hello! Good evening! Hey! I'm very good. How are you doing? I'm just turn my camera around. Steve, you seem to be sideways. All right. Okay, <laughs> so, hang on. Uh, wasn't sure if you were lying down or what was going on there. <laughs> I, need, I, I need to be, but I'm not. How are you doing? Have you had a good day? Yeah, yes, very great. good, thanks. Very yeah. excited to chat to you tonight. Um, so hello everyone who's joining. <laughs> thanks for, for coming along to another Instagram Live. Had two, two in two days, which is definitely a record for us. Um, but we're really excited to be talking to everyone who's able to join us about our upcoming conference. And tonight we have Steve uh, Bennett joining us. He's one of our patrons. He's very passionate about the PHC um, as much as we are. And we have very much aligned um, objectives on, on trying to help people improve their metabolic health with diet. Um, so I'll get Steve to introduce himself in a moment, but just to give everyone a little bit of, a, of an idea about tonight, Steve is uh, going to be talking through a little bit about his upcoming um, segment at our conference next month. And he's also gonna be telling us a little bit about some of his recent um, exercise that he's been partaking in. Um, and, uh, myself, I'm Olivia Quadra, I'm a trustee at the Public Health Collaboration and for anyone who's not familiar with our charity, we're a UK based charity uh, that has been set up uh, to focus specifically on helping people understand the importance of, of their metabolic health and how they can be fully in control of it and um, feel empowered at the right tools and information to take control and eat uh, and, and to achieve full optimal health by eating real food so we're really happy that we're able to 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 start in the last few years really progressing that message and to start to really bring it now to the public in a in a real way so thank you everyone for your support and for joining us uh, we do have a conference coming up next month which is why we're having a few of these lives to get everyone um, a bit more familiar with some of the speakers and some of the topics that we're going to be talking about and uh, Steve in particular is going to be part of a panel discussion which is about um, whether or not you can outrun a bad diet. So without further ado, that's kind of the theme of, of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, Steve, do you mind if I ask you to kick off by just introducing yourself and a little bit about your your background and, and what you do? Yeah, yeah sure. Thank you. Um... So uh, I guess I'm what they call a serial entrepreneur, started a lot of companies, uh, got several thousand staff around the world, or should I say team members, uh, but spent most of my adult life obese, and not from the want of uh, being lazy or, um, uh, or what I thought, you know, I was eating the right things, but it just the wrong knowledge and the wrong advice. And I was obese for many years, and then uh, about six years ago, I found the truth about food and exercise and uh, I haven't looked back. Excellent. And, and, and what are you up to these days, Steve? So, I mean, just recently, so I ran the London yep. Marathon uh, the weekend just gone and uh, I did it a little bit different. Um, I did it after, a, so most people say yep. you've got a carb load for a marathon uh, and you need to eat loads of carbs and, you know, and, 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 and fuel on sugar and have gels all the way around. So I decided just to try completely the opposite. So I did a nine day fast uh, with no calories whatsoever. Got to the marathon on Sunday morning. Hadn't eaten since a week Friday before. Ran the marathon on just water, uh, some electrolytes some magnesium. Wow. And uh, yeah, got around. Now, <laughs> it wasn't a great time. And this is not the first around. time that you have completed a <laughs> just, marathon um, without the, addition, the, um, the help of any carbohydrates. Is that right? Well, it's the first okay. time I've done a, an actual marathon, um, but we've done two experiments with other uh, PHC members over the last five years. 
uh, with Dr. Ian Lake, uh, John Furness, um, uh, James Cracknell, Olympic gold medalist. Uh, we did four marathons in five days about three years ago. Again, completely uh, food free, all of us, about 10 of us, load of doctors. And the whole point of this is we, we, we take medical notes morning, lunchtime, evening, every single day to look at our blood pressure, to look at our triglycerides, our HDL, to look at our blood glucose level, our blood pressure, our beats per minutes and so on. So we, we scientifically do it every time. And then last year, a few of us, a few dropped out because it was a bit more of a challenge. Uh, the day before the PHC conference, we arrived in Bristol, but we'd cycled all the way from Glasgow to Bristol five days again, zero calories, zero food. Again, a bunch of doctors, James Cracknell and myself. And uh, all the time, all we were trying to prove, and, 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 and we're not saying fasting is right for everybody, but against the backdrop of everybody else saying you can only do sort of endurance events following the modern day protocol of carb load yeah. uh, eat loads of food sugar in jet um we all of our experiments and that's why we take all the bi biological markers is to prove that, that there is another way and actually the logic says what well, we're right anyway because you know caveman for two million years you know would have had to chase that animal uh, for his dinner regardless of whether he had eaten yeah fruit the day before carbs uh or or, or nothing or or, or meat yeah. so we're really just following nature and saying look you know, you, you, all this thing about carb loading and only running on sugar uh is is been pretty much yeah. a nonsense and uh and it's just part of painting that bigger picture about you know that the human requirement for carbohydrates and sugar is zero i mean we just do not ever need we have to eat protein we have to eat fat or eventually you know, we, we, we don't survive, but there, there is zero Absolutely. human requirement. And it's to eat just, sugar. you know, a lot of people, I think, will find that they, they they probably wouldn't be able to do that very easily. You do have to get to the point where you are adapted to, to burning your ketones, obviously, to get to that point. But um, you are having got to that point, absolutely living proof that uh, that can happen and that it's perfectly fine and healthy to do it that way. Um, so can I ask you of all of the, the various different um, various different uh, challenges that you've done, have, has any one of them been the hardest? And maybe you're going to say London Marathon having just done it, probably. Your bone's still aching and your muscles still <laughs> bursting. And... Yeah. You know what? I am actually going to say the London Marathon. Um, just because I'm not, uh, and you'll hear at the conference, I'm not a big fan of running. Um, I, I, I believe aerobics plays a part in, in, in fitness um, alongside other things. But but when it comes to aerobics, I think there are probably more sensible things you can do for longevity. You know, for short term, fitness and health, maybe running is good. But, but long term, if the aim is to stay fit and healthy for a long time, while we need aerobics, I think running certainly on tarmac and a hard surface is just a nonsense. Certainly, if you do too regularly and too hard and too fast uh, and, and and the proof of that right now what is it wednesday um <laughs> and my joints are still hurting my bones are still hurting. I, I have very little muscle yeah. soreness because you cannot get muscle soreness um if you're not sugar loading you know people talk a lot don't they uh, uh, about lactic acid yeah. and the build-up of uh, 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 lactase and things like that we just can't get that if you're burning body fat as opposed to uh, sugar and of course that's the only thing I could have been burning so I've got no lactic response or no lactic acid response but I've got real joint soreness and pains and it still hurts today which is further proof that endurance supports in terms of running on a hard surface is just yeah. really probably oh not the way to go well I mean I wonder whether I mean, I'm sure what people will be wondering is if you had you know maybe in the past you've done some good challenges where you have fueled yourself with carbohydrates are you able to explain mm -hmm. a little bit about how that compares, how that feels? Does it feel harder? Does it feel easier? That, is it the recovery that's different or how would you compare no, the two? That's a great question. And I've done stupid things like I've actually <laughs> walked the North Pole. So many people say they walked the North Pole and they haven't been dropped off at the North Pole and spent five hours there. But I've actually walked the North Pole on an expedition. But I'm not even going to talk about that. And I talk about uh, the best... To answer the, the question specifically, so uh, last year when we rode from uh, Glasgow to Bristol, five days on a bike, 100 miles a day, 
every day I'd wake up, no joint pains, get a bit of saddle soreness, but you can't do anything about that. But no calf muscle aches, no, uh, nothing was aching. And yet I do a lot of long distance bike rides uh, for a lot of charity events where you have breakfast in the morning, you stop and you all have lunch as a, a group and then you cycle up a mountain or whatever in the afternoon and then you have big evening meals together. And every single time I've done those events, and I've probably done probably 10 of them, you wake up the next day and you go, I don't know how I'm going to get through today. I'm sore, my legs ache, my muscles ache. And that is simply because we were cycling then off burning carbohydrates and sugar incoming food. And the byproduct of doing that is lactic acid. And yet a bike ride last year, 500 miles, five days, really hard going, hardcore stuff. But because we brought the heart rate down slightly, because we had to, to be fat burning rather than sugar, sugar burning, there was no buildup of lactic yep. acid. So we'd wake up the next day, all of us, like six riders, and every one of us go, oh, we'll be slow in the morning, we'll be sitting there at night having our coffee or, a, you know, uh, we, a few of us had Diet Coke because there's no calories in Diet Coke, uh, which we shouldn't have done, but we did. Uh, or our water or whatever. And we're all going, oh, we're going to hurt tomorrow. We all woke up. We went, pains? No. No, wow. nobody, no pain, no aches, no muscle soreness. Because you get that if you've been running off you know off, mm. off, off ketones and body fat so i think to answer your question the biggest difference between exercising certainly on sort of a, a long distance type event the main difference is if you can stay below your sort of anaerobic threshold where you're moving into then sugar burning I think we might have lost Steve. Let me just invite him back. Okay, so everyone, we're uh, just waiting for Steve to hopefully rejoin us in a minute. If he can get his signal back, I think he froze up. Let's invite him one more time. Okay, sorry for the interruption, everyone. We're just hoping Steve can get his signal back and join us. Let's give him another minute. Sorry, everybody. If anyone does have any questions though, um, the best place to put them is in the little the little speech bubble with a question mark in it. Oh, for some reason he does not seem to be able to join us. Wow. Sorry about that. There you are. <laughs> Sorry everyone. 
are you um you seem a bit better technically <laughs> now yeah it, it was a technical thing called not charging my battery <laughs> so i'm so sorry <laughs> oh, God. school boy error. anyway um so you were just telling us, Steve, about the, you were comparing doing um, a challenging event on ketones versus on carbs and saying that the recovery is a lot easier and the muscle soreness yeah. um, is le much less of an issue. Uh, how would you compare the, the actual performance when you're actually partaking in the, in, in the challenge itself and your ability to really dig deep and, and kind of get the, the time you want, et cetera? Does, would you say that's potentially better? Because I think that's definitely the perception people have so it's really good is that you need carbs for that. So it's a really good question, and I am not in any way, shape, or form an athlete. So I think what we have proven that for endurance events where you're not trying to set world records or overly compete, uh, that you absolutely can fuel from ketones and body fat and actually recover is better. So I think we've proven that beyond doubt. What we haven't yet proven, um, and this will be done the next couple of years, it won't be me, but we'll be funding it, is we're going to be looking for, and we've got a cyclist that's very keen to prove this, that's an international cyclist. In fact, his father is part of the PHC, uh, and we're going to be talking about it at the conference together. Uh, funding some research around competing at the very best levels of ketones as opposed to sugar. So we've proven for endurance it's okay, and actually for recovery it's better. But of course, what we've not proven is, can you win medals? Can you win events yeah. that are endurance events uh, running off ketones? Uh, and, and Professor Tim Noakes and others, way more qualified than I am, um, believe you can. Um, but what we want to do is fund some research just to double check that is the case. And subjectively, how does it how does it feel? Like, do you feel as strong and as energetic when you're on ketones and doing something challenging versus? Yeah, I mean, I have done a couple of marathons before and I've always hit the wall uh, mid twenties and I didn't hit the wall at all uh, this week. Um, and you hit the wall around 20, 22 miles, most athletes will tell you that, uh, because your glycogen stores in your liver uh, and your muscle cells will store about 2000 calories. And that is enough to get you to about 20 miles. 21 miles that were all a bit different um but of course i wasn't running on sugar so i was running on ketones and of course you know every one pound of body fat is three and a half thousand calories so and i've got way more than one pound more than i need so um <laughs> um you know i wouldn't have hit the wall to probably 100 miles yeah excellent i mean it's such a good message for people to hear that you're doing that and it's been proven multiple times that you've that you've managed to accomplish it so Thank you for that contribution um, to to this movement. Um, so just moving on to the conference itself, which is only three weeks away now. Can't believe yeah. it's creeping up on this, this quickly. Um, you are going to be running a panel, and I wondered if you could just talk us through who's going to be on your panel and what you're hoping to cover with them. Okay, so, um, so the conference is about predominantly health. Um, and... Um, Health and fitness are slightly different. And the, the interesting thing is the dictionary doesn't define it. The profession doesn't define it. And um, we're going to first of all define what's the difference between health and fitness. Uh, and health we think we're going to define as, but we'll see what my panel say because I've got a great panel. Uh, I think the result I'm looking for, health is the, the abstinence of disease and illness in you know, sitting in the chair at home, not moving, without any disease uh, and without any chronic illness is health. That's good health. Fitness is slightly different. That is the ability to go beyond sitting at home. You know, what is your fitness level? So I want to define first and all, of all the difference between health and fitness. And I think my panel is the only one then talking about fitness. And then we want to define what is fitness? How do you get it? And what is its purpose? Uh, so I want to define that. And I'm hoping I'll get sort of uh, everybody agreeing that what we should focus on isn't fitness for tomorrow or on a sports event or a triathlon or running a marathon. What we should be focusing on is fitness that will see us through our older age. Uh, and I call it left, simply left. And left being longevity, exercise and fitness training. What do we do to stay fit and healthy for longer? 
because I've always preached that the, t the, 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 the key things, and I've got aging parents, and they've both got their own issues. I, I, I keep pitching that movement and mobility are really, really important. So you, you sort of want, you, in fact, you could say the three M's, you want your mind intact, um, you want your movement and your mobility intact. So how do we exercise for longevity? And I'm, I'm going to propose to my panel that aerobic, aerobics is part of it, but you've got to be careful what aerobics you do, because if you think it's jogging every single day, lots of miles on tarmac, it just can't be good for the long, the long yeah. haul. So we're going to talk. We're going to talk then about the balance between the four pillars we believe in, uh, which is movement, aerobics, resistance, as in weight training, uh, and stance. Because a lot of people don't talk about stance enough. How you sit, how you, um, how you stand. So. Yeah. So how do we get a balance between movement, aerobics? Um, how do we get a balance between uh, resistance training and stance? And also. Where does it really fit into the grand scale? Because too many people in the UK have chronic illness and obesity because they believe all the bullshit that it's their fault for being lazy. And as if somehow exercise is this magic bullet to sort out metabolic health uh, and obesity. And what we're going to discuss, hopefully, with the panel is that we all know there's a place for it. And the, pan the panel is amazing. So we've got like... James Cracknell, uh, double Olympic gold medalist. We've got uh, Christian Daly, who was Scotland international footballer, captain for like five or six years, then left, uh, retired at 39 for professional football, played for West Ham, and, uh, a few others, I can't remember, Derby and so on. Um, but then since done two metabolic degrees about metabolic health. Uh, we've got Victoria, who, who's going to be, I think, the oldest person to row across the Atlantic. And then we got Dr. Sean Baker, the carnivore diet, doctor, the, the carnivore diet guy. Yeah. Uh, so I've got this great panel. But I, I want to ask them, where, where does it fit into everything? I mean, is it like the golden bullet? Is it like we can eat whatever rubbish we want and then exercise our way out? Or is it that, that while exercise is important, we have to put it in perspective that really we've got to get our diet sorted out first? Uh, and, and that's what we can try to find out. That sounds so interesting. I cannot wait. And uh, and Sean Baker himself, I think, I mean, I was writing his bio at one point or reading his bio. And he has won like national championships in I don't know how many different sports. Like. I think he's got three. I think he's in the Guinness Book of, uh, Book of Records two or three times. It's going to be interesting, actually, because three of my four panellists are all linked to rowing, if yeah. you think about it. So James battled yeah. two goals. Victoria about to row across uh, I think the Atlantic and then round Great Britain. Uh, yep. And Sean, um, he's got the concept rower. I think he's, I think he's, he's the got the indoor world rowing champion. world champion. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do, rowing I could, on I, all different. I couldn't, I couldn't do three lengths. Of anything, so. <laughs> They're all going to be saying rowing is the answer yeah. to everything, aren't they? That's what well, in many ways, it probably is because <laughs> it's not impact. So I keep saying, if yeah. you want to do aerobics, do swimming, do rowing, do cycling, but really be careful about how much running you do. Yeah. And what about Christine? I think people don't know about Christine these days. He's got a very interesting line of work, hasn't he? Yeah, so uh, one of the most humble, lovely guys you'd ever meet. And people go, well, well, why have I never heard of him if he was like Scotland's, you know, captain for so many years? He, he, he was captain for Scotland when they were in the, what, I think the only time they were in the World Cup and scored for Scotland and captained it. Why have I not heard of him? Because yeah. he's such a humble man that when he retired 10 years ago, he went back to university, he got two degrees, and he doesn't want to come out into public. Uh, this, I think this is his per first proper public thing ever since he was a football player. Because he said, I don't want to, Steve, come out until I know my message is right. And he's done so much research. He's had thousands of clients through his own gym uh, and, and specializes in uh, people with diabetes, with Parkinson's, with cancer, and recovery uh, using mainly resistance training um, uh, to, to recover from all these illnesses. So. Uh, yeah, phenomenal guy, great speaker, and uh, should be great. So not only is it going to be a fantastic conference, but it's Christian Daly's big debut premiere to the world yeah, as well. Yeah. <laughs> Exclusive to public health collaboration. Yeah. Um, and then my other question was, who else are you interested in meeting, or what other um, what other segments on the on the lineup are you particularly interested in hearing? 
So, um, I mean, they're all absolute fabulous speakers. Um, if people are listening right now that haven't heard Ben Bickman or studied Ben Bickman, probably today, current, you know, current now, the best scientist on the planet in the space we're talking about. I mean, Ben spends his whole life dissecting fat cells uh, with a view to working out what causes insulin resistance, what that drives, what the metabolic outcomes of it are. Uh, he, under, he understands fat cells probably better than everybody else on the planet. So Ben Bickman is one, uh, he, he, uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, yeah. Obviously, David Unwin, as always, will be uh, giving us great insights. I, I just think it's just fantastic. Look, the whole thing is fab fabulous. Great speakers throughout. Yeah, and we're really excited that we're going to be debuting some topics that THC have never talked about before. Um, so that's cancer and Alzheimer's, both of which very important, very linked to metabolic health and, and often not quite connected and recognised as being linked to metabolic health. So we're really excited to have Sophia Clemens coming along, talking about her work in the Paleo Medicina Clinic in Hungary and the work she's doing on cancer. And Ben Patrick Holford talking about Alzheimer's. Oh, um, I forgot Patrick. So. Yeah, Patrick's <laughs> just, oh, the guy's awesome. Legend. I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but there is a firm belief across many of us speaking that, ins well, I don't want to give too much away, but insulin resistance drives the vast majority of chronic illness in the UK to the extent that two or three of the main cancers, certainly breast cancer, colon cancer, Alzheimer's, what my mum's got, diabetes, my dad's got, obesity, stroke, heart disease, can all be linked back. And if, it, and, and if on the odd case, insulin resistance isn't the catalyst, it's nearly always omnipresent in these diseases. And that is the crux of the, of the conference. We want to show and demonstrate the only way to save the NHS. And, and four out of five hospital beds right now across the country Four out of five beds taken up across the UK right now will be directly or indirectly linked to insulin resistance and of the my little segment, but even that <laughs> links to insulin resistance in some way uh, is what we want to get that message across. Main yeah. thing that insulin resistance, the cause of it, of course, is poor diets, but also uh, a sedentary lifestyle can play a part in that. Uh, because yeah. one way of avoiding uh, insulin resistance is, how, is, is to keep your muscles in good tact because uh, muscles don't need sugar to uptake um, energy and therefore it doesn't drive insulin. Um, but um, yeah, it's going to be fascinating. Mm -hmm. And day two is going to consist of panels for the first time, only panels and lots of discussions. So we're really changing the format up. Um, and I think it would be remiss of me to not mention mental health and Georgia Ede coming along. That's another topic we haven't talked much about um, yeah. in the past, although we have covered food addiction, which we'll be doing again, linked to metabolic health. Um, and then two really interesting panels, Do We Need to Eat Plants, which Sean Baker, who we mentioned, will be on, as well as a plant-based doctor, um, Dr. Anthony Chafee, and, and diet doctor himself will be there, as well as Patrick Holford. And, and a great, um, I think, related topic that is worth us focusing on, which is our cows... Uh, affecting the environment and and how so and Jane Buxton the author of the great plant-based con will be chairing that panel so we're just so excited I just cannot wait <laughs> oh Steve your sound's cut out I think uh, sorry you oh, there still you there yeah. yeah I said cows definitely affect the environment how's that well if they are cows in the UK they improve and, the environment. You know, eating grass like they've always done, they're a part of the solution. Yeah. If cows are force-fed corn from a whole different county or state in America, uh, then they're part of the problem. And and this whole thing about cows and methane, I, I mean, I could talk all day about this, but there'll be better speakers talking about it than me. But, but, but cows grazing the way they always have done are part of the solution, not the problem. Yeah. I think you'll get that message at the conference. Cows don't affect the environment. Cows are the environment. So well, that's, that's another one, way. One way to think yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you, Steve, for all of the um, all of the information you've shared tonight. It's been fascinating to talk to you. I'm just going to mention a couple of things. I think someone asked in the chat 
how do we watch online so what another first for our conference this year is that we're going to be releasing live stream tickets and we'll be releasing them tomorrow oh, and cool. so that's not something we've done before and we're really hoping that people will who are not able to come to the conference will will use that if you are able to come then please please do join us in Sheffield that is the best way to support the PHC and the work that we're doing um, but if you can't or if you're anywhere else in the world then this is your opportunity to to watch all of those interesting discussions live as they're happening and so we're we're really yeah. excited to be, can to I be quickly, dialing can, everyone in can i quickly just echo that i mean if you cannot come the online you won't miss you'll see every single moment of uh, the speeches and the conference um i've organized because my background is tv so i've organized all the cameras and the mixing the output will be fantastic online it will be brilliant it'd be like being in the auditorium however if you can get to the conference then there's other things you get as well so if you can get there the networking i've been there for four years running the networking is incredible you learn as much outside of the, the, the lecture theatre as you do in it. And also we have um, quite a lot of really interesting stands uh, where you can uh, see thing, other things that are happening in this space. Yeah. Uh, and I want to come because I've got three of them. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to so be you, busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I think we'll uh, but, it, but So if you can come, you'll learn a lot outside the theatre. The, the networking is fantastic. But if you absolutely can't come, then the the online conference will be it will be it'll be top class top class. yeah i totally agree with that and i think you went to florida recently didn't you to a conference yeah. i myself went to denver and low carb down under recently and there is nothing like being there and the in the networking as you say but just the inspiration and the, the you know the buzz that you come away with from attending and the the kind of the way you're left to feel and i think it was um Doug Reynolds that said, you know, you, you pretty much have the most productive month the month after the conference because you're just on a high and you just want to get things done and make make a difference. So yeah, and I, there's nothing. I don't think what makes a slightly difference, and I think Carb Down Under is maybe the same, and certainly uh, Carb Down Under. But I mean, those three conferences are pretty much the same. But what makes us all different to the rest? You can go to a Diabetes UK conference or whatever, but it's always supported and funded by big pharma or big food uh, yeah. and therefore everything is toned down you know whereas we are we come out with all gloves off boxing and telling the truth because we're not funded by any big organization so you know to, to hear the truth and the real message because the problem we got today is everything is dictated by big pharma uh, big pharmaceuticals and big food and, and their sponsorship uh, and therefore, everything gets toned down, and whoever is sponsoring it, everything ends up really being the benefit the sponsors are, and we don't have that. So, if you want to know the truth about what's going on with health, you have to be at the conference or, or, or you, you know, log in on. Totally, and, and all the more reason to support us because we need that grassroots support by people coming to our conference so that we can make a difference with what we're all trying to do in this space. So, thanks for underlining that as well, Steve. So, Steve, it's been totally fascinating talking to you. Thank you to everyone for joining. I hope that gives you a little bit of a flavour for uh, for what the conference is going to be going to be bringing. Whether you watch it or whether you come along, please get involved. And if you can't do either, then also follow us, subscribe um, onto our YouTube channel, which has got fantastic talks on it, dating back to all the previous seven years of conferences that we've already had. And we would really love you to to subscribe because then you'll hear all about the the new the new talks as they're put up as well so please please do do that it's phc uk org and follow us on all social media channels uh, so without further ado i would say good evening to you steve have a very pleasant evening thank you for your time and we'll be seeing you in about three weeks take care thanks everyone joining bye bye, bye.